before I start, I want to say that there are many stories that are embellished or completely made up on the site. Trite expressions like long time lurker, first time poster, and I swear this is true guys, take away the power of a true experience. Plenty of people use X to LARP and improve the writing ability, so when I say all of this, I want you, the reader, to know that my experience is true and not just another bullshit green text. Unlike some, I have had a few real paranormal experiences. Most of them I can write off as having some sort of explanation, being the result of an overactive imagination. However, there is one paranormal experience that I still have trouble explaining to myself. This is my first green text, so please bear with me if it sounds choppy. This is my own OC. Hold on, wait, before we get this, he was just shitting on people saying that long time lurker, first time poster, and I swear this is true, but yet he literally just said, I swear this is true, and also this is my first time posting. The fuck? Be me, eight. Be strong Christian with an unnatural amount of introspection for a kid. Read Bible every night and pray constantly. Parents aren't so zealous. It's a beautiful Texas autumn in the piney woods. Mom and I are going for a hike with the dog. For a long time, I've been praying that God would speak to me. Decide to use the hike to pray. Remember when God spoke to a young prophet Samuel in the Bible. Look up at the canopy of evergreens and watch a puffy white cloud drifting lazily across the sky. Realize that I have no real idea what's true and what isn't. Ask God if he is real. Mom begins to walk so far ahead of me, I can no longer see her. I either don't notice or don't care. Think about the innumerable Christian denominations and other religions. I close my eyes, grit my teeth, and utter another prayer. Ask whatever God is real to show me that they exist. Pray to all of them and ask for truth. Dusk begins to paint the forest in a shadow. I trip over a rotted log. Begin praying with all of the fervor and zeal that I can. Ask God to speak to me. Repeat prayer of praise, repentance, and my request until I feel like I can't pray anymore. All alone in the woods now, the trees are no longer painted with orange light, only shadow. Continue praying with everything I've got. After some time passes, a powerful, fiery sensation blooms in my chest. Ears begin to hum. Gritting teeth so hard, I hear them crack. Pray harder. Eyes feel like they're about to pop out of my head. I'm shutting them so hard. I can hear whispers, and by this point, I'm very afraid. Begin praying. Ask God to tell me who I will be with the same intensity as before. No idea what the whispering voices are saying at this point, if anything at all. Convinced? The voices are evil. Now very afraid of the idea of God himself talking to me. Imagine it will be very scary. As I pray, the feeling grows stronger and the voices grow louder. I try to ignore my fear and keep praying. Realize all of a sudden that I'm not hearing the voices with my ears. To test this out, I stick my fingers in my ears. No change in sound. I realize then that I am perceiving this experience with the feeling in my chest. I try picking out words into whispers, but am afraid of listening to what they're entirely saying. Try shutting out the noise with the sound of rushing blood in my ears. Come to another realization. The voices aren't speaking with words, but I entirely understand what they're saying. Every quote unquote word. The whispering voices become deafening. I can't shut them out, can only ignore them. As the voices reach a fever pitch, they all stop deafening silence for what feels like several minutes. One single voice speaks clearly, being male but not overly masculine or intimidating whatsoever. Had not yet learned about the still small voice of God. Imagine him to be a very scary giant bearded man. The voice calls me by a name. I was infuriated to be called and checks my pride. It simply tells me that I will be a man of peace. You will be a man of peace, Anon. Peace. I get back to the car. My mom is on the phone with the police and grandpa. Anon, you've been missing for several hours. Where were you? Mom is visibly angry and writes off my entire experience. Well, yeah. Possible time dilation? 
never had anything like this happen before, or since. I've fallen off the wagon sometimes and done dumb stuff, but this experience solidified my faith as a Christian. I am open to other explanations. Grandfather was an avid fisherman, and he tells this one often. Fishing with friends south of the Gulf of Mexico, in Bay of Campeche, around island chain called Cayos Arcas. Probably pronounced that wrong. There are barely islands, but more of sandbars and caves, with large reef around them. One of the boatmates is an avid sailor, and even he's nervous around shallow sandbars. They choose to anchor within sight of the largest sand cay. The first day, everything goes smoothly, and my grandpa passed out early with all the others excluding one. It's the avid sailor. Let's call him Chaka. Grandfather gets woken up the loud banging as Chaka throws open the cabin door excitedly. Chaka starts saying he heard faint calls coming from the direction of the K, and they sounded like they needed help. Everyone gets up and checks the radio, letting out a message asking if anyone is in the area and needs assistance. My grandfather was using the basic sonar on the boat, and was not picking up any other boats with an audible distance, besides a few larger vessels closer towards the mainland. A barge on the radio says that they're fine, and they haven't heard any distress calls, but will stay vigilant, listening. The sound gets chalked up the wind, and everyone goes to sleep. The crew chooses to move up the small island chain for a new spot, and maybe some luck. Up late that night, a few hours after midnight, and the moon has stopped giving off so much light. Everyone hears the sound. Muffled sounds like a crash and shouts. Run to the radio and sonar. Sonar shows no nearby boats. Radio sounds off the same as last time from a large vessel, saying that they've heard no calls but will stay listening. The whole boat is on edge and starts shining a floodlight around towards the quay, calling out. Nothing. They decide to end the night taking some shots to take the edge off, and they head to bed. Next day, they move a ways up the island chain to choose a spot near a sandbar that connects to the largest portion of the reef. Night comes again as they fish. Around the same time, a few hours after midnight, the moon is letting off less light as it sinks in the sky. A large but slow swell hits the boat rocking it. As the swell passes, there's another sound, but this time it's different. Grandfather says it sounded like old wood floors creaking when you walk on them, but louder. Shouts can be heard from the direction of the swell, and they hear it again. It's the crash sound from the previous nights, but this time it's much closer, and it sounds like splintering wood. The shouts are much louder and frantic now as Chaka rushes towards the floodlight. The men are calling out, but there are no replies, just indiscernible, frantic shouting. Shining the light towards the quay and in all directions, they see nothing except more small swells coming towards them. Within five minutes, it all abruptly stops. Just the sound of lapping waves upon the small fishing boat's hull. My grandfather describes it as his ghost ship experience. And in the research I've done, it's most likely a Spanish ship that left Veracruz for Cuba that got off course. And in the dark of night, ran aground upon a sandbar and became marooned. There's no shipwrecks in the area, so maybe there was survivors or a salvage mission, but who knows? It's super creepy that it happened three nights in a row, though. Maybe it's just a curse, repeating its fate every night at the same time. Here's one from around a month ago. Relaxing at desk, around 8.30 p.m. on a weeknight. Getting comfy before I gotta go to bed for work. Moved out of Spooky House from prior stories in 2019. Moved to current place in 2022. Nice little house out in rural desert. Current girlfriend had decided to go on walk around two hours or so ago. Was having on and off conversations through text just to make sure she's okay out there. She stops replying at some point. Isn't posting anything on her Instagram, so I assume her phone had died or something. It was really dark and I wasn't sure if she had brought a light. Throw on my desert walking clothes and pack. Tuck pistol into waistband because holster broke a while back. Head outside and climb barbed wire fence that separates state trust land from my backyard and start walking towards where she was going. When we could walk more often in the winter, we came up with names for different spots, so it was easier to come up with routes. She said she was going to the Wiggle Cactus, 
an old saguaro cactus that had arms that sagged in different spots, cross pair of heavily vegetated washes, and start going up slight incline towards top of hill. Hear what sounds like either a dirt bike or a UTV driving around in the desert to the south of me. Glance over and see bright lights shining around. It's not unusual to see people doing this in the desert around here, but this seemed more like whoever I was seeing was doing laps looking for something. Turn off my flashlight and watch for a while. They're moving fairly slowly, throwing light all around. Get worried. Girlfriend is small, so could be easily grabbed. And most of the people who live out as far as we do are hicks of some variety. Wait for eyes to adjust to darkness and start walking again. Get the very top of hill and spot a strange light in the sky. Strange light is super bright and you can tell it's moving if you stare at it long enough. The object is producing a contrail, super wide and either its engine or whatever's making the light is illuminating the contrail. I watch it for a while before I feel my phone vibrate in my pocket it's girlfriend. Hey, Anon. I saw your texts. I'm okay. Just been recording a spider that I found. Sounds about right. PNG. Do you see that light too? I ask her which one she means, since the bright lights to the south are still moving around. That one, in the sky. It's really crazy. I'll take a picture, but my camera isn't good enough for it. I think about this for a second before switching over to my camera app and trying to get a picture. My phone is having a hard time focusing on the light. By the time I can get a picture, it's faded out of sight. Go back to call. I tell her that she probably should get home. There's some weird dudes looking for something not far away, and it's giving me the heaps. Okay, I'm on my way back. We talked a little bit more after I turned back around before we hung up to focus on walking. We had somehow passed each other. I'm just glad she's safe. Walking back, looking between lights to south, and occasionally turning on my light to make sure I'm not stepping into a hole. Cross washes again. Still can't see girlfriend's light, but I have to get back to fence and wait for her. As I'm getting closer to home, I hear movement, followed by a loud, sharp sound. Only way I can describe it is when you get attacked by a controller and stalker. Panic sets in. Pick up pace and get back over to fence. Wait around for a few minutes for girlfriend. She calls me again, asking where I am. I tell her I'm home and I'm waiting for her. Mention the strange sounds that I heard. Grab a ladder from back of house. Set it up by fence so I can see over the creosote bushes that block most of the visibility. Spot her light. She was way off to the north for some reason. Tell her that I see her and flash my light at her a couple of times to help her find her way. She tells me she sees me and she'll be home soon. Hangs up. As I'm waiting around, still a little antsy, I hear the ringing noise again get more uncomfortable. It happens a couple more times, along with rustling in the brush. Keep blinking light. She eventually makes it over and we walk towards the house. Talk a little bit. I heard some rustling, but no ringing noise. That's strange. As she finishes that sentence, it happens again, multiple times in short order. We nope inside. I grab a couple of beers from the fridge and get comfy before going to bed. Since then, I have never heard that sound again. Between the people out looking for something and the strange light in the sky, I really haven't had any ideas of what happened that night. Only thing I can say from my experience is that the desert is strange, especially at night. Okay, so I don't post much and I'm not making this a green text because, well, the story really isn't long enough and I simply want to know if I should be preparing for something, or concerned. Last night, I called my friend to see if he had heard from a mutual friend of ours. He answered, but the call cut out after 45 seconds due to his connection being shit, which is pretty typical. I ask him about friend and he says, Nah man, I haven't seen or heard from friend at all today. And the call cuts out. He calls back, and all I hear after he picks up is literally just him. Screaming. Screaming for help over and over. How did I get here? Someone please help me. And what was weird was, it was 100% his voice. But shit was distorted. And I noticed a slight deviation in his voice when we first spoke as well, but I didn't think anything of it. So I tried calling the mutual friend to ask him. And mutual friend says, 
I don't know why he'll tell you that because we just got done hanging out. So I text and call friend's girlfriend because they live together to make sure that he's okay. You know, because of the screaming shit. And she says, Anon, I've been with him for the past two hours. He didn't call you. He's been on a video chat with Joe bro. So he grabs the phone and says, well, what did, well, I say when we talked? Because I swear to God, I haven't talked to you today. I explained to him what I said above and how he hadn't seen or been with friend that I was asking about. And he said, yeah, dude, I saw him twice today. So I definitely wouldn't have told you that I didn't. I thought he was just fucking with me until he starts getting weirded out because he is big into paranormal stuff. Send me a screenshot of him being on call with Joe bro at the time that I quote unquote talked to him. So yeah, I apparently talked to someone that wasn't my friend, but sounded exactly like him. And he proved to me that he wasn't just fucking with me. I'm not sure if whatever it was, was about to try to get me to come to it because I didn't give it the chance, but, but should I be concerned? Or do you guys think that whatever it was, just tried the one time and that was it? I'm genuinely curious about that, but also, what the hell could it have been? When I was a kid, around nine or 10, I had two separate experiences with this weird being. I've never had any visual hallucinations and this is by far the strangest thing that's happened to me. The first was in my bedroom before I went to bed. I shut the light off and noticed it perched under my windowsill. It looked like a monkey slash wolf hybrid with bat wings. It was pitch black and had red glowing eyes. The closest I can find is a cryptid known as a hole, but it had more of a ethereal, non-physical vibe to it. However, it definitely felt dangerous. I specifically remember a loud ringing in my ears when I focused my eyes on it. It didn't do anything malicious, it just looked, and it flew away a few moments later. My second experience was somewhere between half a year to one year later. While driving from Walmart at night, we were stopped at a stoplight. Once again, a window was involved. I look out the car window and the same creature is staring at me a few feet away from the car. And again, my ears rang when I looked at it. Nobody else saw it and we drove away. Ever since then, even talking about the thing and remembering its face gives me an extremely off-putting icky feeling. Typing this out feels like I'm almost marking myself as a target. If anyone knows what this is or what it could have meant, please leave me some speculation. Sipping booze after midnight, looking at hiking maps around summer season 2018, contemplating where and when to set off on a trip. Fuck it, I'm setting off now. I can catch a bus in a few hours to a mountain resort, pack my shit and leave in like five in the morning, sleep deprived and tipsy. Take a nap in bus, arrive refreshed, set off on some maze of unpaved logging roads looking for the proper marked trail. Success. I see the white blue white markings on a suitable road. Weather is good, no wind. A bit of a cloud cover at three kilometers over the ridges. See label black rock on a detour to the left of the path. Remember I saw it marked on the map. Some panoramic spot a few minutes away. Go check it out. It's a nice rock, providing a good view of the valley. Scenic, but does not trigger the normal, wow, so cool reaction. Wait a minute. Only thing I can hear is the river and the valley below. No wind. Every bird that was going ham on singing five minutes ago is now nowhere to be heard. I'm getting creeped out, better leave. Got that dreary feeling. Get back on trail, everything is back to normal. Three day hike ends with no accidents. Go back home, look up the spot. In the mid 1940s when communists took over, they used the rock as an execution spot. Just kick the undesirables off the edge. No bullets needed. Dozens of people had died there. My face when? Be me. Work night shift. Received the thought to buy incense and a candle from my local hick country store towards the end of the night. Before bed, pop some LSA, then light the black candle and dragon's blood incense for spooks. It's a Saturday, so I could go to Vespers, but I sleep in instead. Wake up outside of my body getting my back blown out by a gay werewolf. 
I don't fucking remember letting into my house. Oh wait, remember a month ago, some meth friend rambling about his gay werewolf boyfriend. Remember I went out of my way to allow spirits into my home by burning fucking incense and lighting fucking candles. The church service next door is ending and I can hear them chanting. I cross myself sobbing and I black out. My face when I'm never going to bed without my cross or rosary again. Don't think I'm some sort of wuss either. I regularly practice powerlifting and power meditation. It was just the LSA. This isn't a super major story, but it might corroborate what goes on there. I trespassed on Skinwalker Ranch. 2021, summer just started. Heading back west after taking a road trip to Colorado with a friend. Friend lived on the east coast. Caught a plane out of Denver when our trip was over. I'm driving back west and passing through Utah when I think to myself, where is Skinwalker Ranch? Turns out, Skinwalker Ranch is not too far off my route back home. So I decide, fuck it, I'll stop in. Get in mid late afternoon. Still good light in the sky. No clouds, perfect visibility. Go up to the gate first where people stop in to take pictures, just to look around. Nothing unusual, but the place does feel weird. What I didn't know beforehand was that there's a ton of people that live next to the ranch along the road leading up to it. Decide to get more risky, Park somewhat between two of the other properties in an area that, hopefully, people won't fuck with me. There's a fence that surrounds the property and goes up onto a smaller ridge just next to the road. Figure it's a good place to start to get close without anyone seeing me. Go up. Look around. Still nothing. Decide to say, fuck it, and I hop the fence. Start walking towards the main ridge overlooking the main portion of Skinwalker Ranch. Start to get that feeling like I'm being watched walking at angles where nobody should be able to see me, start hearing the high-pitched whizzing sound that grows louder the closer I get to the top of the ridge. The whizzing sound is brief bursts. Turn my head around to see what it is. The sound is coming from every angle. Finally catch sight of the source. Turns out it's a pack of some four or five birds that are dive-bombing my head. Not attacking me, just swooping down super close without touching me. Weird, but... Maybe they had a nest nearby. Keep walking. Eventually get to the top portion of the ridge, where I can see far in every direction. I still feel like I'm being watched. Sit half lotus on the ridge and close my eyes, just reflecting on that emotion of being watched and trying to determine if it's in my head or not. I am clearly visible on top of the ridge, but sitting and not moving, so nobody could spot me easy. For whatever weird reason of me, I start whistling two notes, one high and one low. Do this repeatedly for about 30 minutes. Was out there for maybe an hour. Sun starts to set. I don't want to be here when it gets dark. Heading back to my vehicle. I'm almost back to the fence when I hear from behind me in the direction of where I was sitting. The same two notes I whistled, somebody else is now whistling in the spot that I was. Before I left, I looked around. I could see in every direction and I saw nobody unless somebody was hiding and they snuck up. After hearing the whistle, I walk faster, get to my vehicle, and somebody called the cops on me. I played off cool and they let me go. Cop knows I'm a tourist and asks me if I wanted to ask him questions. Cop's a native, tells me it's definitely skinwalkers, says that they get calls out there all the time, and that the fences are facing the opposite direction from most ranch fences. For some weird reason, I don't remember. Kinda lame, but spooky when I was there. Would like to do more cryptid hunting in the future. Maybe have better stories then. I think that, in general, we're entering a phase where weird shit happens more frequently. Last fall, I went outside to bring in the trash at night, and halfway down the driveway, I see a figure on the sidewalk, hunched over, and a cloak facing away from me. I was like 10 feet away from them, and they were clearly very tall, but like bent nearly in half, like some sort of crone. It freaked me out, so I ran inside for a flashlight, and when I got back outside, they were gone. I shone my light up and down the street, checked different yards nearby, and I saw nothing. They completely disappeared in a gap of less than two minutes. A few weeks later, I was driving home and saw an old neighbor lady on the sidewalk who had fallen and couldn't get up, so I helped her get back inside. 
she fell again that night and was hospitalized and had to be moved to an assisted living home. The thing that freaked me out was that the figure that I saw that night weeks before had been facing this woman's home when I saw it. A few months ago, I was driving to the store and saw a woman in her 60s who seemed either high or in distress. Long gray hair, sundress, walking on the sidewalk away from me. As I got closer, she turned to look right at me and I saw that she didn't have a face, just a black void where the face should be. Weird shit is out there, man, and it's getting more frequent. <laughs>